What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 183 of Two Amazon Sellers and a Microphone, brought to you by Solozo and Netrush. And today, this is it's it's always fun to talk about how to grow traffic and improve conversions of products. That's where a lot of people fail, and they're you know they they select a product, they get their listing created, and they don't tinker and keep improving to make sure that that conversion rate keeps improving and improving. So we're going to talk all about that today with just one of the best experts in the space. Steve yeah. So from my hey guys. guy. What's up? Thanks for bringing me on. Yeah. Um, appreciate you working. joining us again. It's been a while. We were just talking about it. It's been almost a year now, back in yeah. uh, episode 73. If you haven't listened to 73, episode 73, that's where Steven talks about why your FBA product launch failed. And I mean, if anybody's launching products, they know that sometimes it's all great and then it just tanks. So if you, if you want to know why it tanks, go listen to 73. Absolutely. Well, we're glad you're here, Steve, and we love chatting with you. Uh, it, it's You always bring such great knowledge, insights. You're always willing to share. You're always willing to share like the secret sauce of what you're doing. And it's it's so valuable. So we're glad to yep. have you. Share all the trade secrets and then and like 1% of those people that listen will come back and pay me money. That conversion <laughs> rate is awesome. Yes, yes, it is. And you're helping so many people. Uh, so it, it's really great, which leads me to my first question. How many YouTube videos have you made? It's, Over 900. I mean, Crazy. I can't. Yeah, 900. It's it's like every couple of days we post something new. And, and mind you, these aren't all an hour long, you know, but we do have a weekly Q&A on Fridays at noon Eastern Standard. People can check that out. Uh, and then and then, you know, we answer any question AMA style there. Uh, but but typically what happens is I'll get one or two clients that will ask me about something and, and I would just shoot a three or five minute video and just post it on YouTube every single time. Or I'll get a coaching call and someone's like, hey, how do I fix this? And then I'm like, well, we figured it out on this coaching call. You paid me. 400 bucks to talk to me, but then the next guy gets to watch this for free on YouTube. Sounds like a fair, fair deal, right? <laughs> <laughs> it pays to watch your videos, right? Like, it pays. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the problem is, is that it's become a Wikipedia or an, you know, it's just really hard to find the content that you're looking for. So we actually go. So typically when I'm trying to find something, I just go, go to Google and type in whatever my problem is, my Amazon guy, and then I'll rewatch my video on how to solve the problem. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. I mean, that's yeah. good for everybody. There's, uh, there's a lot of problems that can arise in this business. So yeah, you got, you're solving them and it's got hard to keep track. And like at least, at least 200 of them are like brand registry problems or catalog troubleshooting problems. Like why is my listing suppressed? Why can't I connect my brand store? The brand note ID is not connected. You know, the list goes on. Oh my, okay. My favorite though, I'll have to tell you my favorite though was the pesticides test. I gave out the full answer key because it was so stupid like 99% of the people having to take the pesticides test have nothing to do with pesticides. And I'm oh, like, yeah. this is so stupid. Here, here's the answer key. YouTube go have at it. Like, <laughs> I still haven't updated it by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's Two awesome. Years. That's awesome. Hey, before we jump in and uh, start talking about improving conversion rates and, and all that for people that didn't listen to the last episode, don't know you who you are. Just give us a little brief overview of how you got started in this space and what you're up to right now. So I don't think anybody actually cares who I am. They just care about the knowledge we're going to share. So I'm going to keep this brief. Uh, I, I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. And the reason I called it my Amazon guy, because I got laid off from a job. I've been side hustle consulting for years. And I was like, I'm going to start an agency. And my wife, Emily, we we're in the laundry room. She says, well, how do people normally introduce you? And I said, I don't know. They don't really care who I am. They just say, talk to my Amazon guy. So I was literally one guy. I started an agency. You know, I got my first $3,000 contract within 48 hours. Um, that was with Fit Life Brands uh, Supplement Company. Four years later, they are still a client with me. And, and so it's pretty awesome to see like how that developed out. Today, we have over 200 brands. So we help full service management. Anything that grows traffic in the form of PPC and SEO anything that improves conversion rates in the form of design or catalog management. Over 175 employees in 10 time zones across the world. And we've really scaled. I mean, we've just really just had a lot of success and it's been a great ride so far. That's we impressive. Were, yeah, we were talking before we went live. Um, you are an impressive story. I mean, I, we follow you, we follow your videos, uh, follow you on LinkedIn. If anyone, everyone should go check you out on LinkedIn. Uh, what you post there is great. But not only how much you're, you know, the impact you're having with your brands that you're working with, but just 
your organization that you created, the lives you're impacting in terms of the, the employees that you have um, in the culture. It's really, really impressive. And it's been quick, four years. Four, coming up on four years in April. Um, and so, you know, I, I had to hire my first assistant after three weeks uh, back in the day. And now we, you know, we hired probably 30 interns in the last four weeks alone. Um, I, I feel like there's a major shortage of talent in the Amazon space. And so, you know, shameless plug here, but if you need a job and you want to learn Amazon, send your resume to jobs at myamazonguy.com. We are hiring like crazy. Yeah, you're 100 percent right about a lack of talent. I mean, that obviously there's you I mean, you're not graduating with a degree in uh, Amazon PPC anywhere. They're not teaching that stuff in colleges. Um, E-commerce exploded especially during the pandemic you know brands that were retail model are now e-commerce model and there's there's you know their talent is is lacking so kudos to you for training the next generation of talent for sure i kind of i kind of think of myself as xavier i still have a little bit more hair than him not by much <laughs> um, but uh so i'm running the x-men studio right and so like these 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 new mutants come in and i and i teach them like hey you got laser eyes and they're like cool i got laser eyes and then it's like after you know after you've learned how to control your laser eyes you could go anywhere you want because now you're worth three times as much we're going to treat you so well though that you're going to choose to stay and that honeypot culture has just really worked out for us. It's been a really successful run so far, and we're gaining some traction on it. Um, but at the end of the day, we do give away all of our trade secrets, full transparent model, even to our own employees. I love it. <laughs> it's Again, it's amazing. All right. Let's start talking about conversion rate, how you can improve it, how you can grow traffic for your products. When, when you've got a a new client coming your way, where do, what's the starting point for you? Where do you start with them to start making improvements? So if you'll humor me, I can share my screen to give us just kind of a little bit yeah. of a Let uh, me take quick this understanding part. here. Yes, so, so I like to break down Amazon into really two buckets. Uh, on the left, we've got traffic growth strategies. That's your PPC and SEO. And you asked about conversion. I feel like conversion breaks down into two categories, design and catalog management. And so design super straightforward. Of course, everybody understands, hey, have some pretty aesthetically pleasing things, put in the lifestyle images and A-B test your main image and use a pick foo here and there and all that good stuff, right? Um, but the catalog part is highly misunderstood. Um, there's a lot that goes into managing an Amazon catalog. So specifically, you have merchandising on the left and troubleshooting on the right, right? So like we have 30 people at my Amazon guy just doing catalog troubleshooting. This is trying to get Amazon's detail pages to reflect proper data, right? Or, you know, fix a yanked listing or, or try and make something uh, display correctly, right? So like your listing gets suppressed, it gets yanked, your account's suspended. Um, or there's a retail contribution overriding your data. This is bread and butter in the weeds, Excel file template uploading, troubleshooting. I can tell you right now that most brands are not properly investing into this category and it's why they're suffering, right? And so uh, a lot of people are like, oh, it's just like Shopify. I just put my stuff up on Amazon, right? And then hashtag passive income. <laughs> right? right and of course most of us know that that's completely absurd right and and you can you can turn off the screen share if you want okay. um but but basically you know i just i just see so many challenges that come up and, and so like you know just 30 seconds real quick on the aggregators for just a brief moment right so like we have 13 billion dollars entering the space they're buying a bunch of amazon executives with all the money that they're purchasing none of them are building a catalog department none of them and, and so like it's there's just such a massive uh, misunderstanding of what it takes to run an Amazon brand or multiple brands at scale. I kind of think of us as as like a mini aggregator. We just don't take equity in our clients. Um, but, you know, just as another fun anecdote. So so this hot sauce I have on my desk, I keep it to remind myself I'm not infallible. Right. So like I'm a supposed to Amazon expert. So I make no mistakes on Amazon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know where this is going five pound glass bottle in front of me here. 
I made I spent fifteen hundred dollars on the label just alone, just to design a proper label, right? So like we A/B tested the sucker, you know, spent the money. So I pay, I ship it into Amazon, and I pay Amazon to do the prep work. So they bubble wrap this. They're wrapping the bubble wrap around. They're slapping the FN SKU label onto the onto the bottle, and and this four and a half pound glass bottle gets shipped out in padded envelopes, padded envelopes, and so it's like. How I couldn't see that one. Could you have predicted that Amazon would be that stupid? Right? Nope. Like, no, of course not. And so everybody has to pay their Amazon tax. And and so what we see in the course of, you know, like like an Amazon brand that's going it alone, right? They've got no experts externally. They're just heads down doing their thing. What they see in the course of one year, we see twice a day because we have 200 brands. And so we've seen it all. And it's it's a mess out there. So we come in and clean it up and, and improve it. But but when I think of conversion rates, the design conversation is the easy one. And it's fun to talk about, oh, if we tweak this or we we put in a Labradordal uh, doggy instead of the, uh, you know, the bulldog, we'll get higher click through rates. Right. Like that's the fun design work. But the, the true nitty gritty, like, oh, my gosh, did Amazon just ship out my five pound glass bottle in a padded envelope? Like, how am I going to convert when the reviews come in? That is the true art behind the scenes that nobody gives fair credit to. Go. Let's talk about that uh, glass bottle. How did you solve that problem? Oh, I gave up. <laughs> I was like, there's no way I was. So, so here's what I should have done if I wasn't going to give up. I should have boxed it before I sent it to Amazon. That was the solution. You cannot depend upon Amazon's logistics team to do the right thing. They won't. Um, and so I, I ran the math and I was like, okay, if I box this, then my fees go up. And I was like, nobody wants to spend $15 on a hot sauce bottle. This is worth three fifty dollars at the Walmart retail store tops, right? And I, I was just like, oh, it was a fun idea, but I got out of my system and I went next, right? And that's what marketers have to do frequently. I like to joke, the rule of three really applies. For every three products, one is going to do exceptional, one is going to fall completely flat and lose you money. And one is going to break even and you could go either way, but you'll probably discontinue it. And, and if you think about that, then if you if you believe in the rule of three, then, you know, you need to launch three products at a time. And I'm not talking like a gray sweater, black sweater, white sweater. That's not what I'm talking. About. I'm talking about three unique products. So a sweater, you got tennis rackets in the back of your screen and you got baseballs over there. You guys must be really sporty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So do your, do your Super Bowl team win. No, 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 neither, no, neither of you guys got your team. All right. <laughs> no. So, uh, you know, you know, I mean, Georgia likes to throw, throw, uh, you know, championship games away. So I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Going out of Georgia. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you know, I just, I just think that there's just a lot of, you know, energy that Amazon sellers put into their products and they're like, it's like their own entity. It's like a baby, right? Like I got four kids, six and under. And, and my personal motto is live long and prosper. I'm basically Spock, right? Like, um, and so live long and prosper to me means do everything I can for my family, my spiritual life, my, my business, and, and have all of them be prosperous and live long together, right? So like that's my personal philosophy that I apply to all aspects of my life. And I think a lot of times uh, business owners, they get trapped in not letting go of that one skew. Uh, and, and you really have to, right? It's retail is brutal, right? Like if you went into a gas station and worked the gas station as a retail attendant within seven days, your life would just be a different life. Like you would see the world completely differently, right? Like, because you would see how consumers react in real time to uh, a, a purchasing option or availability. And what you put next to the register becomes the prime real estate, right? Same thing applies to Amazon. Wherever you focus your time and attention, it may not be where the consumer is going to reward you the best. You really have to allow that to develop and, and test it and see what happens. And then you also have to navigate the platform to begin with, which is a challenge in itself. Oh, yeah. So with the with the growing, um, how do I want to say this, cost of PPC and, you know, the whole TOS terms of service that happened back October about you know, giveaways and growing traffic. Um, what are some ways that you that you can grow traffic to your listing? Like, what's what are some quick like 
is it running more advertising ad, obviously ads are going to be more things but is it outside traffic what, what are some good ways to like get traffic to your listing so my agency i kept us to be a 10 out of 10 within seller central and that's been a blessing for me like when we first started the agency and anybody who's trying to start an agency right now, here's a piece of advice. You're going to say yes to pretty much whatever the client wants. That's like standard. Until you got three or four employees, you're just a yes man. That's okay. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. Um, but over time, you have to figure out, hmm, you need to be a 10 out of 10 on these things you're saying yes to or what happens. The client yeah. doesn't get a 10 out of 10 experience. Yeah. And, and so uh, when you're first starting out, you're, you're, you're barely charging anything, you know, and, and they get what they pay for and it's probably okay. They're probably pretty happy. But when you're, when you're at the scale that we're at, we have purposely not taken on anything external to seller central. So now that means I've been blessed because I didn't have to deal with or change any of my business practices as it comes to, or relates to rebates, nothing. I didn't have to change a thing. Um, and so what I recommend to consumers or rather uh, brands trying to figure out how to navigate that, ob obviously you shouldn't have done them to begin with is the position I hold. Um, but, but if you did, obviously you don't do them anymore. And what should you do instead? Focus on PPC and SEO. Sounds basic, but let me tell you about the SEO components that everybody's getting wrong, right? So first of all, um, I want a big public debate in the space. I, I, I look at myself as the SEO leading expert and thought leader in the Amazon space. Uh, that's how I feel about myself. And I had a public debate with many, many people, experts, brand owners, you name it. And I, my argument was this a couple years ago, that A plus content is indexed. And at that time, I told everybody, here, here's the scientific method. Like, here's my hypothesis. A plus content is indexed. If you don't believe me, here's how you can prove it in under 48 hours. Go into your A plus content, edit one photo. One photo, you're going to change the alt text. The alt text, for those that don't know, is basically just the code or the words behind the image the consumer doesn't see. Put Spanish behind one photo, Spanish keywords, that is. And you will index for those Spanish keywords in under 48 hours without mm -hmm. fail. Happens every time. So, so this is just one example. If, if people are like, oh, I want to spend money on rebates and I want to take a shortcut and they're not getting the basics of the Amazon platform correct, it makes zero sense to me. So if A plus content is indexed, what does that change? What does that mean? It means that SEO is more important than design. And that means traffic is four times more important than conversion because it's four times arguably even as much as 10 times easier to double your traffic than to double your conversion rate, which mm -hmm. means if you put less resources into traffic generation strategies, it will go farther. It'll impact more sales than if you spend more resources on conversion rate improvements. It also means that you should hurt your designs to improve your SEO. And that means even though most consumers are looking at all of their Amazon listings on their cell phone, you want to put in 500 words of copy into your A plus content. And that's uncomfortable for a lot of brand owners, especially supplement companies who want to be, you know, safe and not risk a D listing or a yank from having all of the, the words that Amazon, you know, yanks for. But I'm telling you, if you put 500 words of content into your A plus content, you will index significantly better, not just a little bit, but we're talking significantly better. And, and everybody at home, you can test this yourself. Run an A-B test. See how much more indexing you gain when you add 500 words of copy to your A-plus content. Now, I have thousands of reps on this question. And I, I can see Chris's big guns in the background there. I <laughs> the reps, right? <clears throat> but I've got more reps on this SEO question than anybody in the space. So I definitively can come out here and tell everybody, put 500 words of copy into your A-plus content. Side benefit, also recommend you use the product grid and compare and contrast your own products or share and showcase alternative ideas, right? So you got a good, better, best model you could do like, you know, less expensive, middle tier, more expensive product, right? You could do multiple colors like a parentage does or multiple sizes, or you could just say, hey, you bought Age of Sage smudge sticks from me. You might also like soaps that are artisan, right? Technically not directly linked, but somebody that bought one would maybe buy the other, right? And so link your products together. So these are things that A plus content can do that will drastically improve your search engine optimization.
All right, I'll give you one more SEO technique because I don't want to bore everybody on SEO only today. But every single SEO tool on the market missed the boat on this one. This is a big one. The search term field calculates using bytes, not using characters. And so what happened was is the SEO tools would, would in the background start counting the spaces and that would count against your character count because a space is a character. And in reality, Amazon wasn't counting spaces against you. And if you followed what the SEO tool said to do on the market, you would have left out 20% of your search term field out. And, and for the last couple of years, we knew that at my Amazon guy. What I didn't know is that every single SEO tool on the market missed the boat on this. And so when I discovered this, I started taking, I started logging into all the tools and taking screenshots of the search term field calculator, uh, you know, all, all of the tools had this problem, every single one of them without fail. And, and, and so I, I went and looked at the Amazon help files. And lo and behold, the Amazon help files backs me up. And it literally says spaces and commas do not count against your, your count. Byte count, not characters. Uh, I, should, I should use a, a mnemonic device on this one. Ah, ah, right, right, not character, right? Uh, and, and so uh, the help file says it. Additionally, if you want to test this yourself right now at home, go into the back end, your inventory page on any specific listing and hit edit on the listing. And what you will quickly see is that you can test it yourself, put in like a thousand letters, and it will tell you you're capped out when you hit to 250 bytes. I'd, lo I'd love to live demo this if you want to bring up the screen share. Yeah. So, so if you go into the keyword section uh, and you go down, and by the way, a lot of these like target audience intended use other attributes, they don't exist in most categories. But right here, you can see my keywords. This is my mom box, one of my best sellers I've had. And I'm just going to type in the letter A a bunch. Okay, I'm going to hit space. I'm going to do it again. And what do you see right there? Please reduce your generic keyword length to less than 250 ah, bytes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Says it right there. Says it. And every single SEO tool was counting characters. So 20% more space. If you were a client of my Amazon guy and followed our best practices, you had 20% more search terms into the back end of your, 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 your seller central account than any SEO tool on the entire market said to do. So, so uh, I, I, you know, I made a big deal and big stink about this uh, in the space. Now, the irony here is that nobody cared. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> like, like I got sure I got 200 likes on my post, but like nobody actually like it didn't make news. Nobody picked it up. Nobody sent me an email and said, "Oh my gosh!" Like crickets. And so, it's really interesting that nobody wants to deal with the basic tenets of Amazon. They just want to go run rebates. They just want to go do external traffic plays. This thing that I just talked about, everybody can update their search term field today and got tremendous value from, from listening to this. They can go add 20% more SEO juice today from this one conversation. Massive value, right? But, but I'm telling you, people just don't rate it. They don't think, I'm going to go find an SEO Amazon agency. I'm going to go hire an SEO expert. Doesn't exist. SEO has, has been in this problem state for decades. Like Google's gone through the same thing with websites and, you know, you know, there's, there's furry animal updates in the Google space, right? You had penguin and hummingbird and panda this and panda that, right? Um, and so like the same thing happens in Amazon. Like people aren't paying attention. There's very basic things there. I that, saw that that's post. That's awesome. I did yeah. too. I was gonna say I saw that post too. And there was there was interaction on that. I mean, you there was there's comment and the uh, a lot of the uh, tools commented. And I tagged them all and I took pictures so they had. Yeah. <laughs> <I saw laughs> that. Well, they, and they were like, "Yeah, you're right." You know, like, <laughs> Zonguru <laughs> patched it in under 48 hours. Props to them. Helium 10 hasn't yet. Jungle Scout hasn't yet. Uh, so, you know, that's why, that's why I'm saying like the, the big, the big tools out there, they don't care. Yeah. Zong Guru is great. We, we like John Tilly over there. He's, he's a good dude. We just did a webinar with him. Uh, good to know that they, they changed that right away. Cause it's a huge, you're right. And it seems like, cause I asked a second ago, where do you start with a new client? 
this clearly seems like where you start. You really yeah. make sure SEO Basically. SEO is buttoned up big time before you do anything. And what what is your typical impact just on that? Like just by sharpening up the SEO, making sure they're indexing for everything they can possibly index for. Are you what kind of immediate impact are you seeing? We, we like to say that we pay for ourselves in under 90 days at, at our agency, but it's impossible to say like which specific action drives what result. It's that like same old marketing thing. You know, you're doing 10 things in marketing, and you know, five of them are garbage, but you don't know which five. And that's like this classic marketing uh, situation. But, but in any case, you can track things and activities in the SEO space very easily. In, and we run multiple phases of SEO at, at my Amazon guy. So we obviously have, we've, we've got lots of reps tracking all of these things. Um, and, and for the viewers out there today, I'm going to give you my SEO phase one guide for free. So Chris and Dustin, I just posted that, posted that in the private chat. If you want to add, excuse me, I got hiccups all of a sudden. If you want to add that to the comment section and, yes. and people can go to that link and all you have to do is just hit the download button or put your email in and we'll give you a free guide and we'll email it over to you. Yes, I'm going to market you after I give you my best SOP. That's going to happen. But you're going to be able to uh, unsubscribe at any point in time. And, and it will talk to you through our SEO phase one. So just kind of break down our, our, our phases here in, in 60 seconds. Phase one is all about indexing. Follow all the best practice, 250 bytes. And, and no commas and no duplicate words because all the words permutate with each other, all that fun stuff, right? Phase two, we call it the pink word update. Brand analytics dashboard will put words in pink that are already on the front end of your listing in the title and the bullets. You can safely pull those out of the back end search terms during phase two. The reason we don't do that until phase two is because we found that you index faster by including them in phase one. This is especially true for product launches. Phase three, though, throw out the entire rule book of every phase prior, prior. And now it's instead of it being about indexing, it's now about strike zone keywords. And what a strike zone keyword is, is uh, a keyword that's in rank 20 through 50. And you want to move it from rank 20 through 50 up to rank one through 10. Why? Because there's so many damn ads on Amazon today that if you're not in the first 10 positions, are you getting any clicks? Mm -hmm. Maybe a few but less than three or 5%, right? So you have to strike zone keywords up into the top. Um, I launched a product back in May of last year, and it was the mom box that I showed the backend search terms for. And I was able to generate $144,000 in sales in three weeks. And I spent $11,000 on ads. You can pull it back on screen if you'd like. This is the mom box that I sold. And, and it, uh, it, it generated $144,000 in three weeks because we had everything ready to launch day one. I ran three A-B tests on how to put the main photo together. We had a video shot. We had all these bullet points. Only use emojis in certain categories, by the way. We had the A-plus content. We had the brand story. How many of you watching this right now have your brand story implemented? I bet less than 20%, maybe. Yeah, I bet less than that. Right? Yeah. Brand story. This is a free module right now, only in the U.S. market. Okay. Here's the A-plus content where it starts. We had all of this live day one. There's my 500 words of copy. I take up as much damn space as humanly possible, right? Because I, I want to have big pictures and use all that. And it just goes on and on and on, right? This is not what you would do on a Shopify store. This only works on Amazon. Anyway, so long story short, I spent $11,000 in ads on this product. And $5,000 of those ads was spent on one single keyword, broad match, gifts for mom. And, and so the, the moral of the story is, is that if you have everything ready upon launch during that honeymoon period, you're going to have an accelerated experience on your sales. And as you go through the multiple SEO phases, you can see how many keywords you're indexing for. So SEO phase one, all about indexing. I recommend 1,000 keywords in 30 days. Phase two, incremental indexing, 1,200 keywords by day 60. So it kind of slows down in phase two. And then phase three, you don't start phase three strike zone keywords until you have 50 keywords in the strike zone. That is 50 keywords in ranks 20 through 50. And then once you have that, you're ready to go to forward to phase three. So that product that I talked about and just showed you, I actually indexed 
for 4,500 keywords in two weeks with zero external traffic, zero rebates, just by following the best practices we're talking about on today's podcast, which is proof, full on proof that if you do the damn basics on Amazon, you can grow your account, right? Like you can do it. When do you do like more testing on it? So you've got the, like the, the uh, item you showed. How do you know when to like test it again? Like test your bullet points or like when do you keep up with it? Great question. So when I first launched that product, I couldn't sell a single unit in the first 72 hours. I knew I had a problem. So I ran A-B tests on the main image. So I'm going to pull up one of those A-B tests and show you. And we used PicFu to do this. So I think I found it. So these are real world tests that I, when I first started out. So one of the tests that I ran was against a competitor. And I just simply wanted to see which item would you rather purchase, this one or this one? And I got crushed, 60 to 40. Now, this was my first image I came out with. And I was trying to showcase that I had a box, that I had a card, and I had tons of crap in it, and that it was super gifty. But just curious, Dustin and Chris, what do you think the number one problem is with this image? It's too busy. I don't know what too I'm busy. getting. Yeah. Yep. And anything else, Dustin, what do you, what do you think? The text. <laughs> Maybe. So, yeah, I think, I think it's the busyness. I think the other ones, it's simple, clean, shows what you're getting. So, you know, obviously I'm a PicFu zealot. I'm a big fan of them. If you want to get 50% off, PicFu.com slash my Amazon guy. And super cheap, 50 bucks, you run a 50 person question. And here you can see, I like the pink. So if we did control F for the word pink here, it comes up 13 times. So, so clearly there's something about the color that could be good or could be bad, but that's not what I was trying to test in my result per se. Um, but you can just go down the list and see like, what are all the things? So let's go to test number two. So I knew that my competitor was going to beat me. So I had to try something different. So test number two. All right. 52 to 48. Didn't exactly move the needle a whole lot, but you know, one person more picked this one. So then we can see like, what do they like? I like to see the close up. Gives me a close up. So the word close up and word close shows up a bazillion times. Like you can see close, 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 close. Um, more likely click on because it shows more of the product, right? They wanted to see more of the material. So, all right. So I didn't feel like I, I had a good enough information to make a change on that. So then I ran another test. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, we got a bunch of client stuff in here too. Uh, all right. Let's see if I can find on the fly. Not seeing it, but we'll find it here. In any case, what I ended up doing was I ran the test of clean versus dirty, if you will, to see what that would do for the click-through rate. And when I cleaned it up, and by the way, I have one of these boxes right here. So this is the product in question. It's a giant gift box. It looks nice. It's 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 very expensive. It comes with a bunch of fluff, right? It comes with the card. But here was the problem. The problem was this, super messy. And so what we ended up doing to fix it was on the front end, we cleaned it up and we ended up with this. And here you can see that these are actually photoshopped on to the top of the box so that none of the curlies, I don't know what you even call these things, um, showed up over the top. So it became cleaner. When I ran this test, 80-20, just slam dunk. And so if you're wondering why your latest product launch didn't work, it's probably the main photo. And that was once I did that, it took off, just massively took off. That so is good. what everyone else is not doing. <laughs> There's, that is thorough testing. Just to, you're in every one of those tests, move the needle, move the needle. Or did it. Or did it. Yeah, yeah. You had to run another test. Yeah. Uh, I could show you a test we ran that was an awful, awful result on like what not to do. And I, you like, whatever you do, don't ask two questions. If you ask two questions in your tests, you will not get a good result. All right, all right, here's the example of this. I got it ready. So so this is test one. And look at the mess of this question. Like, just look at it. Based on the image, which product would you rather buy? For those who pick the second option, if the first option had the wrapping of the name of each soap, would that change anything? Or is no label 
with the name preferable. Okay, so massively confusing question, right? Like first option, second option. And obviously I didn't write this. This was my team. I'm throwing them under the bus. And, <laughs> and so here's the second problem. They asked two questions and then they tested two things. Don't do that. Ask one question, test one thing, or you won't get the result. And here's living proof of why that matters. So they had the labels on and off, but what else did they change? They threw a f the, the flower shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so what am I actually going to gain from the consumer is just a bunch of garbly gloop. Like if you read these responses, they're all over the place because the consumer had no idea what I was trying to accomplish. Now let's go look at the proper test. Now, now real quick, actually notice which one won here. 56, 44 versus going into this one. The opposite one wins 68, 32. Huh. Amazing. So if you ask the wrong question, you get the wrong results. And based on the image, which product would you rather buy? Simplified down, clear as night and day. You want to have labels on and you want to throw a flower in front of the soaps, without doubt. How often are you split testing? Just I know it's it seems like it's a fun little thing, and I don't think enough people do it enough. Like how, how often do you do this for just your own products? Um, almost always on launch until I get it right. Once I get it right, I'm feel I feel pretty confident, right? Like, do you always start with the main image? Is it oh, title? Yes. Okay. Always the main image. You can test titles, but the main image is the most impactful because that's what gets them to click on it to begin with, right? And so, like we've had um, products where we we'll run at AB tests, and and the problem is just the product coloring of the label, right? They use yellow on blue. Um, but, or they use black on white or they use red on blue and, and whatever the combination, there are certain color combinations that just don't, aren't as easy to read. And so if you think about it, when you go to the Amazon search results, right? So if I just type in mom gift box on the Amazon here and we look at the results. So first of all, I have ad spot number one, right? Which is always good to see. And, and so you can see here, like, how quickly can you understand what's in the product based on the main image? And as you scroll down, there's my organically. So I'm ranking fourth organically for a really popular term. And, and whose product are you more likely to click on as you scroll down and look at these things, right? So in the gift space, experience is far more important. In the supplement space, right? So if we go back to amazon.com and let's just type in, uh, why don't you guys pick? Tell me a, a men's supplement you want me to type in. Vitamin D. Vitamin D, super basic. Let's see what we get, right? So now here are your results. First of all, all of these are ads to start with, right? Uh, and and so like of these four images, which would you rather click on? Gun to your head, ready, go. The far right one. Far right one, why? Uh, the box, this is cleaner. I, I like the coloring. Uh, I, could see the t I could see the tablets there. Uh, and it has more reviews from what I can see. A lot of reviews. Notice how reviews was the last thing Chris yeah. came up with, yeah. right? Like huh. it doesn't start with reviews anymore because, because why do you, Dustin, do you believe the reviews on Amazon are real or fake? <laughs> uh, <laughs> a loaded yeah. question. that's a loaded question. Uh, a, lot, a lot of them are fake. Yeah. <clears throat> and, all right. So we scroll down here are the number one organically ranking products, right? So you got a bestsellers badge up here. Um, but like, can you read that? Can you read that that says 125 MCG? No, nope. it's, it's, it's the wrong coloring. What about this one? 1000 IV, whatever IV means, right? Right. Like, so as we scroll down here, vitamin D, vitamin D, D3, D3, like these are the things that you can read. These are nature's made, nature's wise, nature's bounty, right? Like probably all owned by the same guy. <laughs> um, who yeah. knows, right? But as we scroll down, what do you what do you continuously see is more likely to be clicked on is the way that the package is colored, the way that the word shows up. So like this one right here is kind of interesting. Like it kind of stands out to me because they did the opposite of what everybody else did. They went more minimalistic and just yeah. said born on it. Right. I'm super curious. I don't necessarily think I'd buy that product, but it just catches my eye a little bit faster versus the typical other ones. Right. Then we got gummies showing up. Right. Like, OK, you know, kids gummies. That's cool. Right. And so. The, the moral of the story that we're, we're going through here is that your main image is where consumers start their shopping. It's not starting on your detail page. It starts on the search page. And if you don't have the main image right, then nothing else matters. It was Jeez. interesting going through that exercise, actually. Um, you know, I think a lot of times as sellers, we're not perceiving it from the, the consumer journey uh, a lot. 
but that one, just the way we were picking out the product that stood out to us, it was the main image. The thing about that first product we were looked at that stuck out was it showed the pill, the size of the pill right there. I think that's huge. I wouldn't, if I was in supplements, it would take me a long time to figure that out. But as a consumer of supplements, you know, sometimes you get something that the pill is enormous, you know, or it's, you know, you, you never know. To swallow an elephant pill. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's true. Right. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. So I've got some ivermectin on my, my table here and these things are super, super tiny, right? Like, like think about how much easier it is to swallow a small pill versus a big pill, right? Yeah. Consumers are definitely going to go small pills. A hundred percent. I would love to see the, uh, pick food results on some of those images. That one's got to win by a lot that we were looking at. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really interesting to see. I mean, we actually, so I actually have a uh, supplements up right now, if you want to share again. So, so here's an interesting one where all it was tested was just the color. That's oh, it. Yeah. We, we already, we already told them they had to put the, the pill in the shot. We, we won that without having to run a test. We knew that one. Right. Yep. But just 66, 34. The only difference is the color. That's it. Huh? Could, could, can you imagine if you could double your click through rate by just switching colors, how many people would do that? Uh, yeah. 66, 34 night and day. And this takes, and we talk about it, this takes the emotion one hour. out of it. Yeah, well, one yeah, hour is one quick, hour. but it also like you're getting validation from other people, not just like, you know, a family member or whatever. You're getting mom, 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 mom and grandma yeah, or cousin yeah. Joe, right? Like, like also, so I've been in so many boardrooms during my corporate career, right? And part of the reason why I'm never going back to the corporate career world, <laughs> so I don't have to argue with idiots, first of all, right? But like, I would be in the corporate boardroom and I'd be like, I just increased the traffic to Atmex, Atmex.com, American Precious Metal Exchange by 10 million uniques year over year. And you're telling me you won't listen to me on the next SEO initiative. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> this is a true story. This really happened, right? Like, Selling gold and silver coins, easiest product ever sold, sold in my entire life. Never felt more put off than working in the corporate world when I would drive results, show the data, and then the, the boardroom wouldn't listen to me. And, and so, like, you can, you know, if, if you want to be an entrepreneur, listen to the data, listen to your customers. I'll give you one more anecdotal example. So I launched all of these soap bars, and I have, I've had a really good success rate with them so far. And uh, I, I launched these kits ready for you on the screen share. Um, and I, I launched four different kits. So I had a uh, pomegranate cherry and I had um, all of these different artisan type things, mango and uh, all in one box. Right. And so I started getting some customer messages. One weekend, I got three customers that messaged me the same request. Hey, I really like your products. They're really cool. I don't like Mountain Air, though. I would really like to have three dead sea scrubs and one charcoal. Could you send me that? Well, no, I can't because I didn't build my SKUs that way. And so what I ended up doing is I tried to go into Amazon to see if I could configure a customization where you could pick the number of soaps and number of scents. That is not actually possible in the Amazon platform. That would um, be helpful, though. It would be based on what I was trying to do. So I ended up compromising. And I ended up creating, uh, so I'm going to go to the back end of my Seller Central on the other screen here for just a brief second uh, and pull this over. I ended up creating a new variation where four of each scent was available. So, so now somebody can come by four cedar wood or four charcoal or four cool water. I never would have thought to do this, but three customers in, in less than 72 hours all emailed me asking for it. So I made it on the fly. I threw up a fake image and I said, just buy this. I promise I'll ship the right product, right? And, and this one person wanted three charcoal and one cedar wood or something like that. So a new entire 16 variations were born on a weekend whim from three customer service messages. And now I'm selling, selling 18 new SKUs, 16 new SKUs. Well, think about the average order value here too. Maybe somebody's like, you know, I'll take four of those and give me four of that. <laughs> I mean, this is great. So, so there's a lot of things you can do with data right now. Now, clearly I'm not a big advocate for high skew catalogs. I think if you're going to launch another product, launching another center of a flavor or a variation or a color is not what I typically advocate. But in a situation like this, where I, I do the manufacturing, I do the boxing myself and where I could pull 16 new SKUs with a couple hours of effort. Heck Yeah. Heck yeah, I got to do this. Yeah, and, so and so, you know, whether it's a pick food test or it's customer service messages or it's SEO data showing indexing improves when you take some of these actions, 
These are the sort of things that Amazon entrepreneurs should be doing. You've thrown a lot of good nuggets in this thing. And so I okay. want to summarize it like in a quick like message here. So if, if a seller has a list, sellers have listings, what's, where do they need to go? Like, what's the first thing to do to make that listing better? Is it no, like, do I need to know what my conversion rate is before I even pick a product? Like look, go look at my unit session percentage first on a shitty product and try to make that one better. Like, where do I start? <laughs> Always 80-20 where you start. Focus 80% of your effort on 20% of the portfolio that does 80% of the sales. guess you could call that the 80-20-80 rule. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but in any case, uh, your best seller should be always where you start conversion or traffic improvement initiatives. Now, most people don't do that. They just want to launch more product. That's cool too. And when you're going to launch product, use the rule of three we talked about. And, and make sure when you launch, use launch dates. Don't launch until FBA is checked in. Do all the keyword research. Have all the campaigns set up. Use tools like Solozo so you guys can get all of the juice out of the PPC and, and all the things that matter to make sure the product shows up to as many consumers as possible. In summary, there are four things you need to do as a consumer or as a seller to consumers. Sell more product to more people more often for more money. And the fourth one is always the one people forget. Right now, the inflation rate's 21%. The government freaking lies. It's not 7.5. It's not 7%. It's 21%. Whatever the government says, triple it. And <laughs> and you guys know, right? You, yeah. You've got a container out of China. You freaking know what's going on. Your cogs yeah, yeah. are up. Yeah. So, so if that's the case, why haven't you raised your prices, guys? Yeah. You're, it's a chicken or an egg question, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Cause like your, did your competitors raise them yet? Oh, if, am I going to, am I going to be the first one? Is it going to, is this going to hurt? Well, everybody needs to do it. Every chicken is going to cross the road on this one, in my opinion. Good That's stuff. a good tip right there. Yeah. I mean, every, every prices are going up everywhere on everything. Uh, and a lot of times that's, that's the one thing I think a lot of uh, sellers are so scared to do. They're so scared to raise their price, but it's, it's you have to, <laughs> you have to right now. Yeah, make I, that profit. I completely agree. More money. There's so much in here. I think the thing that uh, I take from this is, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, there's so many things that you have to take care of. Yeah, obviously you're researching new products. You're dealing with logistics. You're dealing with your team that you're you know that works with you. Everything. This is so important, but everything that you just said takes time. And so just outsourced it all to my Amazon guy. We'll take care of it. <laughs> That's where I was going. You, well, yeah. at some point, you got to have somebody do this. Like you yeah. can't be doing 50, 70 SKUs individually on your own. Yeah. You know, I, I did a really good podcast with Ad Badger and Michael Erickson, and it was like the Avengers cast of who you need to run an Amazon account. And <laughs> the funny takeaways were like, you're going to hire Hulk to do your inventory and, and, and the warehousing, right? Because you want a big guy that can lift stuff around. Do you want to put Hulk in charge of your SEO right. or your PPC? <laughs> no, no. You need freaking Iron Man and Black Widow, guys. So, so like, uh, make sure you put the right experts in the right places. Because if you don't, you're you're gonna have Hulk smash going on right now. Mm -hmm. You see an SEO. Well, let everybody know how they can reach out to you if they're if they want to get you as a part of their team. What do they need to do? Well, if you just want to say hi and say thanks for doing the podcast, send me an email over to podcast at myamazonguy.com. But if you want to hire us, fill out a contact form at myamazonguy.com. We'd love to talk with you. My dad, Dan Pope, is the sales manager for, for Inbound Leads. We'd love to talk to you and see what we could do to help you grow your sales faster and give you the peace of mind that your Amazon account is handled so you can focus on your business. All Perfect. right, Steven. Thanks so much for joining us. And that was invaluable. Uh, it's You're very like, welcome. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you. I've got a to do list now. <laughs> to go well, you should also him. go look at his YouTube channel. It's uh, amazing. <laughs> or, you, or you could hire me for coaching, but not <laughs> in my YouTube channel, whichever. Yeah, that's right. Well, you, like you mentioned earlier, like people can watch it, but it's got to implement it. And some people just don't take the next step. It's it's a lot of effort. Yeah. Yep. All right, Stephen. Thanks so much. That was a that was loaded with tips. Thank you for being transparent about your process. Uh, it's super helpful to everybody. Uh, go check them out, myamazonguy.com. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you like content like this, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. 
make sure you're uh, following us on Solozo's social channels where we live stream these almost every single day with amazing guests like Steven. Uh, so make sure you're doing that. Subscribe to those social channels. Also, if you're struggling with your Amazon advertising or if it's something that's taking up too much of your time, just like SEO takes up a lot of time, so does PPC. We'd like to help you here at Solozo. You can go to solozo.com. You can book a demo. Uh, when you book that demo, mention that you uh, heard about us on the podcast and we'll give you 30 days for free of Solozo plus an onboarding call plus a free account audit. Um, if there's a lot, we'll make sure that you are set up for success using Solozo. So solozo.com, book a demo. Chris and I are excited to chat with you really soon. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Stephen. We'll see you guys next time.